How do you go from being a brokey with $5 in the bank to the CEO of a million dollar company working just a couple hours a day from your phone or from your laptop? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I did that, but first I wanna be clear. The best advice I've ever gotten when it comes to making a lot of money without doing a whole lot of work is you can't control the output, you can only control the input, and the input will determine the output. So if your goal or if your desire is to make $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a month working for yourself or working online, you can't actually control that $10,000, that $20,000 coming in. That's not up to you. What's up to you is the inputs. You can control the cause, but you cannot control the actual result. And a lot of people who go through my courses, who join my community, who pay me for my coaching, they get so attached to the end outcome, they get so attached to the end result, they put all their focus on that, rather than focusing on the inputs that they can control, the actual process itself. When you focus on the process, when you focus on the inputs, when you focus on optimizing your inputs, you can then optimize the speed at which you receive the end outcome, you can receive the results, like the money. There's this famous quote that a lot of coders and programmers all share with each other and that is garbage in garbage out so you put garbage code into the software you're gonna get a garbage result but if you put clean code into inside the software like Bitcoin for example you get a clean output you get an amazing end result product if you don't focus on input it's like walking up to a bunch of logs and being like I want fire give me fire give me warmth it's like Dude, you have to actually create the spark. You have to actually light the logs first and then that fire will become the result of that. So in this video, we're gonna focus on five different inputs that you can focus on if you wanna be making a lot more money online and potentially create your own million dollar online business like I've done. The very first input that you can focus on is content. And a lot of people suffer from content to patient. They have all these ideas for content, they don't actually execute on them. Or sometimes they don't have any ideas for content, so they're wondering like, what sort of content should I post? And I know what that's like, I've been there many, many times in the past. I've got a list of like 100 different video ideas, but I never actually do anything with them. And one of the easiest solutions for this, there's a bunch of different solutions, but one of the easiest I found is if I pay somebody to edit my videos and I pay them a monthly retainer. Now I'm forced to actually make the videos. Otherwise, I'm just pissing away money. So I found if I just pay an editor and I pay them like a flat monthly fee, then I'm like, okay, now I have to actually feed the editor content. Otherwise, I'm just losing money. And the easiest way to brainstorm a bunch of video ideas that makes it really easy for you to actually make the videos for the editor is just to come up with five different lists. And these lists are on various topics that make it easy for you to come up with video ideas. The first list that you can write down is a list of everything that's working really, really well for you right now or everything that's worked really well for you in the past that you think could really, really help other people. The second list is a list of all the mistakes that you see people making and how to avoid those mistakes. The third list is a list of all the problems you see people experiencing right now and how to eliminate those problems. The fourth list is a list of all of the desires you know people have and how they can get those desires faster. And the fifth list is a list of all the questions people ask you on a regular basis, kind of like an FAQ list, that you can just make a video answering for people. That way you don't need to keep repeating yourself, you can just link them to the video if they ever ask you again. So that's the first input you can focus on, the actual video content. The second input you can focus on is writing. And you might be wondering, what should I write about? Well, you can write about any of the five things that we just listed out above. You can write about the mistakes people are making, the problems people are having, the desires people have, what's working really, really well for you right now, or just questions that you could ask a lot and, and a solid answer for them. But when you do the writing, a lot of people experience writer's block. They look at a blank page, they see the flashing cursor, they don't know what to write, or they don't even know where to begin, and they're trying to like make it perfect from the first moment they start typing, they're like, what, what exact word should I use here? It's very, very difficult to do that. So when it comes to writing, when it comes to optimizing this input, I don't let myself write. Instead, I go into mode one, and then I go into mode two. Mode one is purely brain dumping. I'm just getting all of my thoughts out there and it's garbage, but it's out there. It's boom, 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 boom. I'm not allowed to use the delete key. It's just out, 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 get all the raw materials out. Then once I've got all the raw materials out, I feel like I've expressed myself at least haphazardly, fully, but messily, that's even a word. Then I go into mode two, which is editing. Let me tell you, it is so much easier to edit something that's garbage than it is to write something really good from scratch. Editing is incredibly easy. 
This is why when my clients come to me and they get me to review their work, it's super easy for me to review their work because I can take a look at their landing page, I can take a look at the content, I can help them edit it, and I can give them really good feedback because all I have to do is edit what they've already created. I don't have to create something from scratch. That is super, super difficult. And so the problem a lot of people have when it comes to writing is they try to write and they're constantly shifting between mode one and mode two. Imagine being in a manual car and someone's just shifting gears back and forth, back and forth, being jolted back and forth, you're gonna get freaking whiplash, it's painful not comfortable. That's what you feel like when you're trying to write something good. So instead, just brain dump everything out, take a quick two minute break, come back later. When you edit, that's when you make it clear. That's when you make it succinct. That's when you add in your favorite words, add in your favorite bits of grammar, whatever, make it formatted properly. But do not do both at the same time. That is a huge hack that I learned from some of the top writers in the world so that they're able to complete their books. They just get it all out and then they edit. Separate tasks, neither of which really involves any sort of writing. It's just brain dumping, which doesn't feel like writing. And there's editing, which doesn't feel like writing. All right, the third input you can focus on to make more money has to do with the things you do throughout the day. So most people, like my old self included, would just wake up in the morning and think, hmm, what should I do today? Oh, we might open our phone, we might open our laptop, we might go on the news, we might be like, hey, what, what's going on today? We're like looking around, we're getting all this input from, from all these other outside external sources, and then we're wondering, okay, well, what should I do with my business today? And then we're like, oh, well, it might be a good idea to write down a to-do list. So after we've consumed all this bullshit, then we take out a paper and we write down a to-do list, and we wonder why we don't feel like doing anything on the list, or we're wondering why we're so confused as to what we should do, because we just consumed all this chaotic information. So the solution to all of that is rather than waking up and just winging it or waking up and writing a to-do list in the morning, before you go to bed, plan tomorrow, tonight. This is the best hack ever. You can focus on optimizing your to-do list for the following day, the night before. There's something very special about the evening when you're in bed. It's calm, it's quiet, and you have 20-20 hindsight on how the day went. You know exactly how tomorrow's gonna go as well, if you repeat what you just did. So with that hindsight in the evening, what I like to do is spin the night lap on, grab my notebook, write out what I want to do the following day. And I always start with writing out what I want to do the following day, not what I feel like I need to do. I make sure to include on there what I really want to do. Because if I just write out a bunch of stuff that I need to do, then what ends up happening is I loathe the following day. And then I wake up in the morning like, oh crap, I gotta do all the stuff I don't wanna do. Instead now, I have that thing that I really want to do. And when I wake up, I'm like, sweet, I get to do that today. And it's not like this, affirmation of like, I get to do this. I genuinely am excited that I get to do the thing like because I wrote down what I actually want to do. So that is huge. And yeah, I might also include some things I need to do, but I make sure to add on there something that I really want to do. Then when I wake up in the morning, I do that thing first and that builds momentum into all the other things that I might need to do as well. That is a huge, huge hack right there. And the little bonus tip is if you find yourself writing down a whole bunch of things that you need to do but don't really want to do, use that as wisdom that it's time to delegate those things. You should really not be doing anything ever on an ongoing basis that you don't want to do. As a CEO, you should be delegating all the stuff you don't want to be doing so that you can stay in your zone of genius and just do the things that you love doing. The fourth input that you can optimize is your information diet. What ends up happening is a lot of people will graduate high school, they might graduate college, and then they pretty much stop learning new stuff. And if they do learn new stuff, it's kind of like this grind or the struggle or like this feeling of like, oh crap, I gotta learn again. And so a lot of people just like refrain from learning new stuff because like they just don't want to. They want to just remain how they are and have money coming in. And so if you're not making more money every single month, I'd say that's a symptom of you not knowing what you need to do to make more each month. And so it's a symptom of you having not learned what you need to do to make more. So it's a symptom of not learning. If you're not making more each month, but you want to be, you need to learn how to make more each month. And so one of the best habits you can instill, one of the best inputs you can develop is the input of audiobooks. Really rich, really successful people have already taken all their years, I repeat, years of mistakes and success tips and tricks and habits and life hacks, and they've condensed all that into like a four, five hour, six hour audiobook for you to consume. And so within just six hours, which is like an hour a day for a week, you can condense time. You can take all their years of experience and absorb it. And when a successful author's thoughts become your thoughts, because you're listening to them, their beliefs then become sort of like your beliefs. Your actions 
start to become like their actions. And then your results start to become like their results. A lot of people give me credit for building this million dollar company that I've built, but it's like, I didn't make this stuff up on my own. I can't take much credit for creating it on my own. I've learned from so many smart people through the years just by going on audiobook walks. And I'll listen to at least an hour of audiobooks at 1.2 speed. Now, if you listen to an hour a day of audiobooks over the course of a year, guess how many new books that is? That's 60 new books, 60 freaking books in a year. Most people don't read 60 books in a lifetime. Most people don't even read one book in a year. You're getting a 60 X multiplier on your level of knowledge than most people. Like there's no competition once you start learning this stuff. And the only reason you're not making more money is because you don't know how, because you haven't learned. Once you learn how, again, like I said, those Author's beliefs will become your beliefs, your actions will then become like their actions, and then your results will become like their results. But again, you can only focus on optimizing input, and then the results will be what they are. But at least focus on optimizing input when it comes to your information diet. And if you want the list of the top 10 life-changing audiobooks that I listen to that turn me into the man I am today and help me make millions of dollars, you can click the link in the description of this video and you'll be taken to a page where you can get that list of the top 10 audiobooks that you can immediately download and start listening to right away. And you can feel the upward trajectory of your life within the first hour of listening. So go ahead, check that out, link in the description. All right, the fifth piece of input that I wanna share with you today is your consistency. If you can optimize this input of consistency and stay consistent with everything we just talked about, you can't lose. Humans have a very hard time though, understanding and really appreciating the compounding effect of what happens when you do something day after day after day after day after day, which is why so many people, as you probably know, are so overweight because they don't appreciate the fact that if they're 300 calories over one day, but they're then 300 calories over the next day, now they're 600 calories over it. Then they're 300 calories over the next day, now they're 900 calories over it. Then you come stretch this out over the course of a year, they're like 100,000 calories over. No wonder they're obese. No wonder why one in five Americans are obese. No, matter, no wonder why one in three are extremely overweight. It's because they don't understand the compounding effect of excess calories. And that's just one example, but the same goes for finances, same goes for relationships, same goes for your fitness, same goes for your lack of flexibility, same goes for your lack of creativity. If you're not doing something consistently every single day, it's gonna catch up to you. And if you are doing something every single day, that's awesome for you, you're gonna crush, you're gonna win so effortlessly because you're just compounding day after day after day after day after day. So how do you stay consistent? What is the trick for consistency? One way to stay consistent with something, one way that's really worked well for me is creating a container for the day. All those things we talked about, especially the to-do list, it's easy to put these things off till like later in the day, later in the day, later in the day, and then maybe you don't get to them, or maybe if you do get to them, you get to them at like midnight or 1 a.m., but then you wake up the next day and you're really tired, which is then now you're out of your routine. But I find to stay consistent for me, as long as I'm in a routine, it's very easy. I like to set an alarm. I have an alarm automatically set every single night at 7.30 at night and at 7.55 at night. And these two alarms, the first one says, this is a reminder, get ready for bed. And then one at 7.55 says, this is a reminder, get to bed. So my goal every night is to get to bed before 8 p.m. I've got those two automatic reminders that help me do that. And this has proven so freaking helpful because if I'm on a Zoom call, that alarm pops up and people on the Zoom call can hear the alarm telling me to go to bed. Or if I have friends over, the alarm comes up, tells me to go to bed, I get kicked the friends out. Like it's super helpful having that alarm to remind me and to remind my friends, hey, this is time for bed, time to get to bed. By having a, that deadline for the day, it lets me get all the important stuff done before I go to bed, as opposed to just putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and end up going to bed at like midnight or something. So there's a huge hack. The input of getting to bed on time, the, this affects your input of being consistent with everything. And then again, if you can optimize your inputs, you will optimize the outputs. And one of the best inputs is consistency. Because if you're consistent with everything that's awesome, everything that's positive, everything that's super helpful for you, the results are gonna come so much faster, so much more effortlessly. So that is a huge hack, highly recommend it. I personally use an A-L-E-X-A. -E I won't say it out loud because it might trigger it, but I use her to program that alarm around the entire house. So every night at 7.30, every night at 7.55, those two alarms go off and it helps me get to bed on time. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, cool, peace out, see you in the next video. And again, if you want that list of my top audiobooks that changed my life forever, just check out the link in the description and you'll be taken to a page where you can get those audiobooks. All right, peace out, ciao, bye.